thrown and in prison. It's more beloved to me than that which they invite me to. In other words, he's saying what? Let me be alone, away from all this fitna and temptation. Let me just be alone with you, worshipping, doing what I love to do. We know that Allah Ta'ala mentions about Dawood alayhi salam. وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ نَبَأُ الْخَصْمِ إِذْ تَصَوَّرُوا الْمِحْرَابِ And has there come to you the news of the adversaries when they climbed over the wall into his mihrab, into his prayer chamber? What does this imply? That Dawood alayhi salam had a regular schedule of being alone, of worshipping alone. And therefore they had to climb over the area and come into his private space and then they had this discussion and the rest is, you can find in uh, Surah uh, um, 38, Surah uh, Saad. And furthermore, Allah Ta'ala says what? About Zakariya alayhi salam and Maryam alayhi salam. كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّا الْمِحْرَابِ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا قَالَ يَا مَرْيَمْ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Every time Zakariya would enter upon her coming into her prayer chamber, he found provisions with her. And he would say, he would ask, O oh, Maryam, where are you getting this from? How is this coming to you? And she would say what? It is from Allah. That he provides who he wills. Subhanallah. So what do you find throughout the Qur'an time and time again that it is part of the routine of the righteous to get away from all of the noise and all the distractions, to get away from humanity, to get away from other human beings, not because we are antisocial, not because we believe in monasticism where you stay long you know, years of your life away from humanity, living in some uh, cave or some mountains or whatever the case is. No, not to that extreme extent. But is it healthy? To get away from humanity just for a little while? Absolutely. Is it healthy to have periods of time where you can be alone and simply worship Allah Ta'ala on your own? Absolutely. Is it healthy to ensure for your own sake, for your own certainty, for your own sincerity, to make sure that you're not doing this just because everybody else is doing it? To make sure that it's not just going with the flow? It's not just a question of routine or habit? Rather, no. You want to fulfill and complete and follow in the footsteps of all of those who were righteous before you time and time again throughout history. This is the quality of the best of humanity. And so if you want to be the best, then act like the best. Have some time where you can dedicate away from everybody else, only focused on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the benefit? What is the benefit of this alone time? You're able to think clearer when you're alone. And when I mean, what, I, what do I mean by think more clearly? What I mean is, you have the ability to avoid herd mentality. Herd mentality is what? This idea that everybody's doing it, so let's just go with the flow. You see everybody moving in a certain direction, you just think, let's all go with it together. SubhanAllah, listen to these words. The Prophet ﷺ is commanded to say this. Qul, say this, O Muhammad Sallallahu Tell the people this. Qul, innama a'idhukum biwahidatin. I only advise you one thing. SubhanAllah. What a, this is a, clearly a powerful statement. To say, I'm only advising you one thing. In Surah Saba, Allah says what? قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَعِذُكُمْ بِوَاحِدَةٍ أَن تَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ مَثْنَى وَفُرَادَى ثُمَّ تَتَفَكَّرُوا SubhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala says what? Say, I only advise you this one thing. O oh, humanity, pay attention. That you stand for Allah. What does this imply? That you stand up seeking the truth. Seeking what is right. You stand for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in pairs or individually. مَثْنَى وَفُرَادَى And then you what? You give thought. Thumma tatafakkaru. Subhanallah, this, I feel like this ayah has so much psychology built within it. This is the ayah that completely tries to attack and destroy this concept of herd mentality. You see, all the people are doing hustle and bustle, and everybody has a certain culture, they're acting a certain way, they have a certain behavior. You have to stop and either have one on one conversations, that's what it means to be in pairs. Instead of just running along with the crowd, grab one person in the crowd, ask them one on one, sincere conversation. Why are you doing what you're doing? Just because the crowd is doing it doesn't necessarily make it good or bad. You have to actually investigate. Use some critical thinking and talk to this person, not in front of the crowd where they're going to use this herd mentality. No, individually. Tell me, what are you doing? What is this practice all about? Why do you people behave this way? And then when you talk about it individually, then retire. Go alone and think about it individually. SubhanAllah. This ayah is so powerful that you need to what? Have one-on-one -on -one conversations and then be alone and think about it. And then have some more one-on-one -on -one conversations and then be alone and think about it. And so SubhanAllah, this is the benefit of alone time. Part of it is what? That you can think more clearly. You avoid this herd mentality. Furthermore, Allah Ta'ala knows our flaws. Allah Ta'ala knows that we are very impressed with big numbers. 
which can overwhelm our independent thinking. As Allah Ta'ala says, قُلْ Again, say this, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Tell these people, they need to learn this. قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ ثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ Say, not equal are evil and good. Evil and good are not equal. Even if the abundance of evil may impress you. Even if you are impressed with the big numbers. Oh, so many people are having fun. So many people are doing it. So many people are involved. It must be a good thing. No. If something is filthy and evil, it's evil regardless. And if something is good, it's good regardless of the numbers. So subhanAllah, this ayah is telling you what? I don't care the big numbers behind something that is ugly or filthy or evil. You need to be able to break away from all that and analyze it for what it is and use a little bit of critical thinking, independent thinking, to be able to think by yourself. Furada, on your own. Thumma tatafakkaru, and then really think about it. Is this something that I want to be doing? So subhanAllah, there are many benefits to being alone, to, to being comfortable being alone. Many people, they're not comfortable with who they are, what they've done with their lives, what they've accomplished, the own thoughts that they've put in their own head by watching and reading and listening to what they listen to. They can't be alone. They hate to be alone because their own mind is torturing them. Maybe they, are, they have so much regret, so much pain, so much, uh, you know, sadness over their lives. They don't want to be alone. It is healthy to reflect over who you are, where you came from, what are you doing, where are you going when you are on your own. Why? Because at the end of the day, Allah Ta'ala tells us throughout the Qur'an the danger of being just with the majority and how goodness is really found with the few. وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ Most people aren't grateful. وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Most people don't have any knowledge. وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Most people don't have any faith. وَأَنَّ أَكْثَرُهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Most people are defiantly disobedient. وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ يَجْهَلُونَ Most people are ignorant. When it comes to الحق فَهُمْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ هُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Most of them turn away from the truth. And Allah Ta'ala says over and over again all these ayat telling you what? Be wary of the majority. And be comfortable being with the few. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ And few of my servants, very few of my servants, are truly grateful. Furthermore, one of the benefits of being alone is that we know when you work hard in this dunya, in the public sphere, you can make money. You go to school, you get good grades, that's all in public. You go to your job, you work hard, you make your paycheck. This is all in public because we have to live in a society. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But just the same way you want to make a lot of good money, in this dunya, you also should want to have a big bank account in the akhirah, insha'Allah ta'ala. And that's not done in public. Yes, it can be done, so certain things can be, but you want to make sure you have certain time alone. As Allah ta'ala says, Indeed, those who fear their Lord, one interpretation is when they are in private, when they are alone, when nobody is watching, when nobody's there to judge or to see them, when nobody's there evaluating them, when you're on your own and you are still fearing your Lord, those people will have forgiveness and a great reward. Ajrun kabir. Make some time to be alone. And finally, why should we have some time dedicated to alone, to being alone and worshiping Allah Ta'ala? Because it's a command of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufyatan. Call upon your Lord. Supplicate and pray to your Lord. How? Tadarru'an. In humility and what? Khufyatan in private. This is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful thing. When we are here making dua all together in Tarawih, it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. But do you make some time for yourself to say, Ya Allah, I also want to call upon you, beg you, ask of you when I'm completely alone? Yes, do it with the group. We do it as a community. Why? Because we're begging Allah ta'ala for so much communally. Beautiful, there's nothing wrong with that. But do you, are you making some time, even a little bit of time, to do so khufyatan, as Allah Ta'ala commands, to do so privately? What I'm trying to get at, brothers and sisters, is that Ramadan can sometimes become hypersocial, to the point that you don't even have a moment of solitary spirituality. It could be the case that you wake up in the morning and have your suhoor with your family. So you're with your family. It's a public sort of event, you could say. And then you go to work or you go to school. Of course, you're surrounded by people. And then you have your iftar, and iftars are often big parties with family and friends. And then you come to tarawih, where you pray in the jama'ah, which is all good. All of it is good. You go home, you pass out, and you do the whole thing over again. MashaAllah, it's a great routine, it's beautiful. But I hope you notice that there isn't a moment alone. You have to 
carve out a piece of time for yourself to make sure that you're completely alone with your Lord. And by alone, I don't mean alone with your phone. That's another important point that inshallah ta'ala I hope to mention in the second khutbah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam 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 Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa sallam ala rasulillah. We are living in an age of information overload. We're living in an age where people, the moment they spend a second alone, they start to twitch. You can see them getting uncomfortable and start reaching for their pocket very quickly. They don't like it. The silence is painful. I, my, my thoughts start to creep up. I start thinking about who I am and where I'm going and what I've done. Oh, I don't like it. I'd have to quickly, distraction. SubhanAllah. This type of addiction is very dangerous. Why? Because when you have information overload, when you're pumping your head full of too much information, you go numb. It deadens the heart. Eventually, nothing means anything to you anymore. You've seen it all. You've heard it all. You can hear the news of, oh, that's the cutest thing. Whatever. Oh, my God, so many people died. Whatever. The world's coming to an end. I don't know. There's a virus destroying everybody. I don't know. Okay, sure, maybe. SubhanAllah. This is what happens with information overload. It destroys the heart. And then when you have a destroyed heart, what happens? You become desperate to feel anything. You want to fill this void that is in your heart because it's an emptiness inside. So now you have to fill it with what? I don't know, go on Amazon, try to buy something. Maybe this will make me happy. Maybe that will make me happy. Materialism, you're trying to stuff this empty spot in your heart. You're trying to fill that void and it doesn't work. And when you become this materialistic person, what happens? You lose all spirituality to the point that even if you make dua, your dua is so ins insincere that it doesn't connect. So what is this talking about? Information overload, A, leading to a dead heart, B, leading to this materialistic, filling the bottomless pit, C, and then D, you're having insincere dua, no connection to your Lord. Listen to the next dua that the Prophet ta taught us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'. Oh Allah, I take refuge in you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. Stage one. A, I don't want to be information overload. Keep me away from all this useless information. There's too many distractions out there. I don't want that. Why? Because A leads to B. Wa min qalbin la yakhsha' And from a heart that doesn't fear you. I don't want to have a dead heart. I don't want to have information overload that leads to a dead heart. Oh Allah, protect me from that. And then why? C, what does that lead to? If those are paying attention, leads to what? This sense of never satisfied. Unquenchable thirst, so you fill it with materialism. Women nafsin la tashba' And from a soul that is never satisfied. Oh Allah, protect us from that. And what does that lead to? The final point, dead spirituality. You don't make sincere dua. Women dua in la yusma' And from a prayer that is not heard. SubhanAllah, what a powerful dua. When you pay attention to the dua of the Prophet you start to really contemplate and realize there's a lot of wisdom here. Even in the order of these different things. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yakhsha' wa min nafsin la tashba' wa min dua'in la yusma'. SubhanAllah, what a dua that, how relevant is such a dua today? So yes, we need to spend a little bit of time alone from all of the noise, all the distractions. Because alone time trains you, trains you in many ways. For one thing, it trains you to be more silent. SubhanAllah, we are living in a time where the world is full of influencers, quote unquote. Everybody's an influencer. Everybody and their uncle and their cousin is an influencer, SubhanAllah. Constantly making content, content, sure, whatever you call it. They talk so much, but nothing improves. Why is that the case? Well, maybe because they don't have anything to say. Every kid that has a phone is now a content creator, is now an influencer, mashallah. Have you ever heard the expression, silence is gold? You need to maybe be quiet a little bit. Listen, think, contemplate. Maybe come up with an idea that's actually worth sharing instead of just constantly trying to expose yourself to the world. Look at me, I'm doing something important when it's not important at all. How can you train at this? By being alone. By training yourself to be silent. When you do so, inshallah ta'ala, you'll get better and better at picking your words more carefully. Why do you think every single khutbah begins with what? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadida. Every single week you're hearing these words mentioned in Surah Ahzab. Allah Ta'ala commanding, oh you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words that are sadida. Short, clear, concise, to the point, direct, truthful, honest. Speak words that are direct and clear and concise. Every single week. Why do you think the khutbah has this in it? Because this is part of our problems. Kalam and fal just... Nonsense speech constantly coming out of us. We need to quiet down. Speak clearly, speak concisely. It's a sunnah of the Prophet. Aisha she says, the Prophet used to talk so clearly, so concisely that if somebody wanted to count the number of his words, they could do so. 
What does that mean? You can count the number of his words. When you can count your own words, subhanAllah, that means that you've deliberated and chosen your words very carefully. And yes, we can develop that skill more and more if we spend a little bit more time alone. Choose good words. Choose your words. Choose to speak good into the world. Say something positive. Your voice has such a powerful effect. If you don't have anything good to say, be quiet. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day should speak what is good or be silent. So many ahadith on being careful about your tongue. The Prophet says what? Men samata naja. Whoever is silent is saved. What a powerful hadith. Whoever is silent is saved. What does that mean? You're saved from humiliation, saying the wrong thing. You're saved from regret. You're saved from lying. You're saved from backbiting. You're saved from insulting others and gossiping and spreading rumors. You're saved from so much. If you were to just train yourself, be alone sometimes, learn to be quiet, appreciate the silence, and you'll get better at this, inshallah ta'ala, instead of adding to the noise constantly. The Prophet says what? أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَ ابْنِ آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ That the majority of a human being's mistakes are in his tongue. You're not constantly having slips of the hand every time, I don't know, you're grabbing something, you drop it. It happens, but how often? You don't always have slip of the foot every time you walk, you're falling. It happens sometimes, but rarely. But how many times do you have the slip of the tongue? May Allah protect us. The majority of our mistakes are what? With the tongue. So be a little bit more deliberate and intentional in the way you speak. Jabir, Jabir ibn Samura, radiallahu he said what? About the Prophet he said, samt That the Prophet would be silent for long periods of time and would laugh little. Unfortunately, many of us are the opposite. Everything is a joke. The entirety of life is one big joke to us. Everything is laughing. Look, I'm not saying don't be positive. Yes, laugh, be happy. But subhanAllah, when everything is a joke, and when you just can't stop talking to the point that people just block you out, I don't even want to listen anymore. There's nothing beneficial. I listened to this guy for 20 minutes. He had nothing to say. I'm done. Let's not be that type of person. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we have finished our first 10 days of Ramadan. I want us to start planning our last 10 days of Ramadan now. You have 10 days to plan out and get ready for what? For i'tikaf. This is really what I want to talk about today. I know it's a lot of preamble, but what am I getting at? Being alone, being in silence. This is such a beautiful ni'mah, it's such a gift, such a beautiful sunnah, the sunnah of i'tikaf, spending the last 10 days of Ramadan in the masjid. We really shouldn't lose out on it. I can say from a personal perspective, I've lived, alhamdulillah, in a number of cities, and I've seen many different masajid who have such a vibrant, beautiful i'tikaf culture. It's part of the masjid culture. That every time Ramadan comes around, the masjid is used to it. They have areas set up. They have large numbers of people. It's part of the culture. And subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, I must say, year after year, we've built this masjid, alhamdulillah, and we do have a few brothers who, alhamdulillah, may Allah reward you all, do come for i'tikaf. But I must say that given the size of our masjid, and given the number of our attendees, and given the amount of amenities and facilities we have, for example, what a great kitchen we have, how much space we have, alhamdulillah, I think it's fair to say that we should have much more of a vibrant i'tikaf culture for both our men and our women, for our brothers and our sisters, which is indeed the sunnah of the Prophet I'm hoping that us as brothers and indeed our sisters as well can step up, and I'm mentioning this 10 days before, so we can really plan it out to truly make it something special, inshallah. Now, of course, we should not be looking at anybody else and blaming, why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? You don't know other people's lives. You only know your own. And there are most definitely many people who hear this and say, I know that I can't. It's really not in the cards. It's not realistic for me. I understand. It's not for anybody else to judge. But at the same time, there are, there, there are those, there are people here right now that are listening that say to themselves, you know what? I can pull it off. I can do it. Allah Ta'ala has opened that up for me. Allah Ta'ala has given me the ability to spend these last 10 days of Ramadan in the masjid doing i'tikaf. So if that is the case, then inshallah, I hope you spend the next 10 days and the next 10 nights making dua that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala invites you to his house, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala opens his doors of mercy to you. Allah Ta'ala takes you in as a guest. Allah ma ja'alna minhum. Oh Allah, make us from amongst them. That Allah Ta'ala makes us from amongst his guests 
who could spend 10 nights worshiping him, 10 days and 10 nights in this masjid. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who learn to spend time alone. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who aren't afraid of silence. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are people of contemplation. May Allah Ta'ala forgive us for all the times that we talk endlessly and uselessly. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala make us be more careful with our tongues and with our speech. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina sharra ma qadayt. Fa inna ka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk, innahu la yadillu man walayt, wa la ya'izzu man alayt, barakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana, wa qina athab al-nar. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, wa alayhi wa sallam, simi kthira, wa aqmi salah.